streamers, YouTubers, Facebook, Periscope, whatever media you are on, good morning to you. And welcome to day 13. That is day one, three. What an awesome number, 13. Day 13 of the prophetic 30 days of praise. I am your inspired by the spirit of holy hostess, J.C. Prophetess Bernice, a.k.a. the Truth Hacker, broadcasting live from the Transformation Ministry in our Father Station, AJ Ministry, which is a subsidiary in the Apostles of Jesus House of Prophecy under the stewardship of the spirit of love, exuding and protruding from my Apostles, Apostles Calvin and Evelyn Harrington, and which I love in spirit and in truth abundantly. Amen. Always got to give my apostles a special shout out because without their without their guidance and their help, I, I promise you, I wouldn't be here alongside with the Lord. I would not be here. So day thirteen. So on our day thirteen. Uh, Day 13 is the numerical representation of intermediate. So the the perfect thing about that is that it's right on time for today's message because intermediate is between no temptation and temptation, uh, also known as or better known as rebellion. So it flows right into the understanding of what we're going to talk about today, which is the war and the warfare. And we understand that when we are in war, we need an army, all right? So with that being said, I'm going to just open up with 2 Corinthians 117. When I plan this, did I do it carelessly or do I make my plans by natural nature? So as to say, yes, yes, when I really mean no, no. Let us pray. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, Lord of hosts, Jehovah the Baals, to be my direction as I put on the whole armor of God in dominion against the pits of hell. Because we going into that. If God be for me, who can stand against me? For the Lord is a man of war. O oh Lord, fight against those who fight against me, Jehovah the Baals. Take up your shield and buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Cover me with your feathers and under the shadows of your mighty wing. And I commit this people connected to this line directly or indirectly to you so that you can finish the work you begin in each of us and with that we are completed in Christ Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower and over every principality and authority and power and dominion and every name being named not only in this age, but also in the one coming. Hide me and your people connected to this line from the secret counsel of the wicked who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows and bitter words. They shoot in secret at the blameless and make it hard for the people to present themselves before you, Lord. Keep those that want to be kept but cannot resist as he is Satan, as he is roaming back and forth, Give them strength if they be willing to be sober-minded and alert. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. I am just want to flow right into this thing. For we wrestle, for we live in the flesh, but we do not wage war according to the flesh. I want you to hear that. For though we live in the flesh, we do not wage war against, according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Mm-hmm. The weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have divine power to demin- to demolish, diminish, okay, diminish strongholds. We tear down arguments and every presumption 
set against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, right? So the war is truth versus lies, and the army is the army of truth versus the army of falsities. This day, so I want to say this to you all to uh, trust me, if I be the one sent with the message, then you must know I was the first partaker of the message. I have lived the lie. I, I, I perfected the lie. I thought I invented the lies that I was telling. I became the lie, and I almost lost my life to the lie. And I'm talking the the natural means by means of living and also to be in bondage, jail, and also to die. Okay? So un- understand me when I say that I don't I'm I don't want to go into every circumstance, but I'm telling you, if you didn't believe me no other day, this day you must you must open up your heart and mind to believe me. That's why in the beginning I prayed to say Oh, we're going into the pits of hell. We're going in there today because we all house it and it's in all of us. And 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 now let me just go so I can get the message out. I don't want to miss nothing today because this is very, very important. As as anything else of God, but this is where we all have our struggle at. Everybody. War in the body of Christ means the combat to combat truth against falsities. And I'm going to remind you of a saying that we use as a cliche, but we don't recognize the power of the combat, that, the power that combats the opposing forces when we say this. We don't recognize the power that combats the opposing forces when we say this. You ready? We say all the time, the devil is a liar. Yeah, you, you, you say it right. You probably said it this morning already. The devil is a liar. And, and just by declaring that, what you are saying is that I'm not accepting this outcome. Go back and get the truth or the answer that I want. That's what you're saying. If you're saying the devil is a liar, that means whatever happened, you're saying that's not the truth. I'm not even accepting that. So do you see how powerful just that little, the devil is a one, two, three, five words, the devil is a liar. Do you see how powerful that is? You got to see that. And, And this is what's called warfare because when circumstances occur and things occur, we use such things as, the devil is a liar. So we're already saying we're not in agreement with the outcome. Good God from Zion. So if you're not in agreement with the outcome of something that just happened, how is it that you overturn it? And why is it that you use the devil is a liar? Even without you knowing and recognizing, you are saying that that is a lie, and you know the truth, all right? (laughs) Woo, good God, I wish I had a longer time with this one. But if we apply the same strength and determination towards more principles in God, we will be operating in dominion. Because when we say that, if we get a notice on the door and they say, um, uh, let me think of something. I don't want to call up nobody's circumstances, but it, it, okay, you get a note to say uh, did your, your boss call you in the office because something happened. And, and and the boss say this is probable cause for suspension. And you say the devil is a liar because you're saying you're not going to suspend me. You're not going to do nothing. That's not going to happen. The devil is a liar. So that's operating in dominion. You're taking power. You're taking authority and power over. So that's a fight. That's a war. 
because you're saying, I'm going to change this circumstance, right? So that's operating in domain just by speaking that to whatever you speak that to. The devil is a liar. So whatever he is in that circumstance, the truth has to surface. Oh, oh my God, today. And you're telling yourself without even recognizing that truth has dominion, right? You're operating in your dominion. So remember, in dominion, there has to be a king. Every king has a kingdom, and every kingdom has dominion. And every dominion has an opposing force, which is what we just talked about. If the devil is a liar, then God must be the truth. It has to be the opposite. Can Bezebub cast out Bezebub? All right? So it's saying if, if I'm the same, I'm not coming against myself. Okay? I, I just need you to understand that. Why else do you think we put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith? the sword of the word, the shot to spread the gospel in peace. In peace? Wait, wait, who's opposing to the gospel? Why do I need to spread the gospel in a helmet of salvation? Surely you understand you're not fighting a natural war. You don't get up. You put on spiritually these things, but you don't get up and put your shirt on and, and put your, your armor, armor on as if you're actually in the physical war of the outward, the natural state of war. You don't. So that's telling you that there's something else going on. So on this day, team, you must recognize why you do what you do. You wake up every day and don't realize you fight against truth to live a lie. And you fight against life to die. When you don't acknowledge God in all your ways so he can direct your path. Or you wake up every day and don't realize that you fight against a lie to live in truth. And you fight against death to live. When you do acknowledge God in all your ways and allow him to direct your path. Yeah, this thing, it, 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 we we say these and we uh, say it with such you know the the sincerity is not there because we don't understand what's really happening we don't recognize what's really happening. The scripture says, "Fight the good fight of faith to take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made the good confession before many witnesses." Okay, who are you fighting? Who are you fighting? You don't walk out every day with your fists up. You don't open your door with your fists up and and, and ready to bang, right? It says, we tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God. Oh, who are you arguing with that already thinks they have this knowledge? We And it says we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Oh, so we got to make something obedient to Christ. We have to arrest and get a hold of every thought to make it become obedient to Christ. My God to that. Listen, God is going to show you how obvious, how oblivious, you are to what is right in your face. And this happens because we call ourselves living without God. I mean, you just, even just for a second, if you just think about it, where is the other army that you are fighting against? Who do you keep getting dressed for every day with the whole arm of God to fight against? And who are you arguing with that know so much that they, they're, they're going up against the knowledge of God that you know. Who, who is that? Like, where, where is this war coming from? And, and who, who, who has time to argue every day? 
Where is the other army at? Are you, are you ready to hear where it's at? Let me get my drum roll on. Y'all hear my drum roll? <laughs> Listen. It's you. Yeah, it's you. The lies and the falsities that are in your mind, heart, and soul. You're fighting against what's in you, the life. How did these things get in you? You live it every day. And because we we wake up and live according to life, this life, that life has dealt us, we believe that that's our life, that that's the way life is. When God is saying, no, that's what you think, that's what you see, that's all you know, because that's what you were taught. We were taught of our father, the devil, who is a liar. He is a liar. I need somebody to hear me today. If I could, if I could, could have shared with you something that happened to me, I'm telling you, I'm just going to say this little part because it's 23 years ago that could have changed my life. And I am just getting to the truth today, not per se today, this minute today, meaning in this time span, because I am in the position for God to deposit those levels of truth within me. I just told you all the other day, I did not become the truth hacker for nothing. I live the lie. I died in the lie several times, even almost until the natural. So these falsities and these lies are in you. How do you think you know how to lie? How does a one-year-old, a two-year-old know how to lie? How? You don't tell the child to lie, at least not at first. They watch. It's already in them. So they adopt, and the death was there, and that's what's in us. So when we come into the knowledge of God, our own knowledge that's in our own mind, we're the ones fighting against it. We are the army of falsities fighting against the armies of truth, and that's why we have to stay grounded and stay in the righteousness of God. We have to or else we go back to the same mind state because that's the only state we know. Why do we have to be trans? Formed? Why do we have to be renewed? Why do we have to be separated? Renewing of the mind, resurrected, revived. What are we reviving? What are we going to church to be revived for? You're walking in the church, so this is not obviously a physical death. You know how to talk, you know how to read, you know how to comprehend. So obviously, this is something else going on that we are tearing down arguments. Well, who's arguing? You are arguing the truth that you're learning and that that has been seated in you and that you are obtaining is going against the knowledge of God, against the falsities that you had. So it's just like when you go to school, and this is a good example because I actually experienced this. When I started going to college and taking college courses, although I went, um, and got the high school diploma, I thought that my understanding was, was great, you know, because I, I read and I understood clearly. But when I started taking those courses, the level of understanding was so much greater. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that word could mean that many things or that can have that many definitions behind it, depending on how you use it, how you manipulate it how you work it. So this is the same way the people are is working the word when they, they're, they're lying to us. This is the same way the enemy is manipulating us. He works it. He works it. But the point is, the higher I went, the more understanding I had to comprehend what was happening. So when the enemy has us in fake praise and sitting in the church doing fake things, We never get the true understanding of what's happening. So the war is really 
one, when you fall captive to falsity, whether even if you lie, lying to your children. We talked about this the other day, and I laughed at myself, but this is applicable even right now, and just a quick uh, statement that goes with this. One time I was dating this guy, and we were celebrating Christmas, and he said to me, you think he told my child that there was no Santa Claus, and we had a big argument about that because I was so upset. And he said, you mean to tell me after I just worked all this overtime to give you the money to go get uh, this girl's Christmas stuff, and you want to tell her a guy dressed up in a Santa Claus suit bought this? That's a lie. He ain't do the time. I just worked for this. I'm not going to allow you to tell her that somebody else gave her this after I just slaved and worked this overtime to give you this money. Absolutely not. And in thinking of that, today, that is a lie. You, we dress it up, but it's a lie. We're caught up in the lie, and we don't even know it. We are so oblivious to what is standing right before us because we are trying to live without God. And those of us who are living with God, the enemy now wants to trick us out of our place in God to now make us manipulate and lie and do things that are outside of righteousness that we know that we should not be doing. Why, if nothing, if there's nothing to fight for, why are you fighting? If there's nothing to steal and you have no value, then why is the enemy coming to you? Why do you need to be tricked into doing something? That's telling you something right there, right there. So, with remembering our statement, the devil is a liar. If, if you don't get nothing else out of this day 13, remember the power and domain that you operate in when you say that, so that. That's what you have to say to yourself. You're not combating armies of the natural people that are standing outside waiting for you. You're combating the falsities that have been implanted in you, the doctrines that you have been led by. And they don't, doctrines doesn't have to mean in the church because kings are not always in the church. There's kings and falsities. There's kings and truth. The point is you're following the principles, either the principles of falsities or the principles of truth. Those are the kings operating in your life. So if you are in the kingdom, uh-huh, under the king's dominion where he dominates his dominance, your dominion is in the truth. And that's why you say the devil is a liar. Because you're saying, because I know that that's a lie because I know the truth. And I know the lie is of the devil because I know only God is truth. That's what you're really saying without you even knowing that you're saying it. You understand why you do what you do. When you're coming into the kingdom of God and transitioning, you are saying, I'm taking off my clothing of lying for the truth. I want to know the truth. That's why you're coming in. I, this cannot be my life. This cannot be. I need a change because I'm not accepting this. The devil is the liar. You see? You see how that goes? That's how it goes. And that's dominion. And, and that's how it goes. But we have to apply it all the way across the board. When we get that unction to follow them in faith praise, we got to tell ourselves, that, listen, Jehovah Zeboeth, Zeboeth, Z-E-B-A-O-T-H, is the name of the Lord as who fights for us human, humanity against war, fights the war. So if, if God is fighting the war, where is he fighting it at? I'm just trying to help you understand. God is a spirit. So the war has to be spiritual. We fight not against flesh and blood, but rulers of darkness, darkness. You can't see them because you're not in lightness, okay? Principalities, you can't follow, you can't see them because you're not under the right principles. When we come in alignment with God, these things are exposed quickly, quickly. So... That's the war, and that's the warfare, and that's how you combat it. You take dominion. 
You say to yourself when circumstances come up, and even if nothing comes up, let this be your prayer today. Lord, I fight the good fight of faith because I understand the devil is a liar and he shall not live in me. That's how you, and you got to declare that thing like you declare it, and you got to strengthen that thing and believe it like you believe for them circumstances or whenever you use the devil is a liar. Because I know when I say the devil is a liar, I mean what I say. And I say, I'm saying the devil is a liar. You, you won't get that off. Not today. And, and, and you got to say that every day. You just started winning your war. You just start winning the battle. You just keep overcame your circumstance, even with your finances. Everybody's finances. When you start saying the devil is a liar, I'm going to have enough to pay, then you got to come into the principle, the spiritual principle of the truth, which means you got to be righteous in your finances. All right now. All right. All right now. We're, we're, I, I'm going to see maybe Friday we can do something with finances and, and because I saw something that, that was not good, and I think I need to definitely address finances and the principles of finances. But today we know this, that we are going to fight the good fight of faith because the devil is a liar, and we are going to, within ourselves, tear down the argument that has persuaded us against the knowledge of God. Allow God to have dominion in you, the spirit of God. If all you know is the Lord is my shepherd, then find out what the shepherd is to you. So that when something else tries to lead you, say, ah, 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 the Lord is my shepherd, the devil is a liar. You see where I'm going with that? Thanks for tuning in, guys. The time is up. It's time to go. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow at 7 a.m. sharp. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all your support and your tuning in. And also, don't forget the way you can sow a seed is do not let the seed that has been deposited into you fall to the ground. Allow God to do what he said he's willing to do in you and finish it. Have a great day, a safe day, a blessed day. Fight the good fight of faith. And remember, the devil is a liar. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 7 a.m. sharp.